Howdy YouTube, Mark DeRemer here from Refurbished Gentleman, and today on RGTV, you're gonna be watching a step-by-step -step tutorial of one of my finishes. Although this finish is about three to four years old, and some of the products, if not all of the products within the video are products I no longer use. So what you're gonna see is in the video description below and throughout the video, for the supplies used, I'm going to give you what I recommend currently. The main reason for that is if you contact me and say, hey Mark, I'm working through your finish and I just, it's whatever you said to do is not working. If you use what I recommend, it's gonna be easier for me to help you walk through those steps. If you use some of these older products that I no longer use, it'll be harder for me because some products change, they change their formulas, all that different kind of things. It just makes it harder for me to walk through it with you. Does that mean you can't use your products or the products within the video? No, but I just wanted to be clear before you jump into the video that what's actually in the video is not gonna be what I recommend based on those facts. So I hope you enjoy the video. I look forward to seeing anything that you guys create from this and be sure to tag Refurbished Gentlemen on all my social media if you do decide to try it. All right, so step one, French linen. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning video, we're gonna go with the grain, with our piece, and it's gonna be a thin coat painted on, so some of the wood's probably gonna pop through, and that's perfectly fine. We're not worried about that, because we're gonna go over this thing with multiple layers of paint, so you really don't need to stress over, you know, getting complete coverage. It's more just getting a coat on as your base, and something to, not have it be so brown or golden in this case to ensure that you're going towards that gray stone oak look. So it's more grays and whites than it is brown, but it has some of the brown coming through as driftwood was once before it dried all out, it was brown. So, you know, it, you want to have the hints of it coming through, but not necessarily have it overtaking the color or the finish that you're gonna want it to end up looking like. So we're just almost like a staining this, this French linen color because you're still gonna see all the grain and all the, well, not too much of the color, thankfully, because this is a lighter color. If it was a darker color, you'd see quite a bit of the brown still coming through, but like you'll see on the piece, if you look in some of the, the close-up shots, you'll actually see some of the brown still coming through. So. And I'm not, and this is another cool part about this finish is you're not going to use a lot of paint because we're doing dry brushing for the majority of the rest of this and even this coat is just going to be the one coat. So another kind of uh, cool thing about this particular finish and the fact that dry brushing is the large majority of it. So that's all we're doing. We're just going to slap this on here. And then once I have, a, have it on there real good, I'm going to make sure I go in with the grain. And it's almost like you're putting it on and then pulling it back off, kind of. Because there's going to be spots where the wood is going to show through based on how you paint it on. So hopefully you guys can see this real good. Face it towards the light. So I'm just going to go with the grain. And you see just how easy this is going to end up being because this is all there's going to be to this step, really. Just going to lay a nice thin layer, almost like you're doing your first coat, but more deliberate. Like when I do my first coat, it's very haphazard all over the place. Just to get a coat on, as long as it's a thin coat, and it's not going to affect the layers that go above it anyway, I just get it on there. But this one's more deliberate. I want the, the lines the, of what I'm doing to go with the green everywhere I'm going. And I'm not too concerned about filling it all in, just actually pulling some off to make sure you can see through it. And voila, easy, right? That's all there is to it. So I'm turn it back towards the camera and make sure you guys can see it real well. So that's going to be it. And you can imagine if it was darker wood, you'd have a little bit more popping through. And that's it. And then our next step, we're going to get into the dry brushing portion of it. And we're, again, we're going to start from darkest to lightest. So the next step will be graphite. 
And the only thing that's gonna be unique about the graph plate is you may not do it all over. You might just do it in spots here or there, which I'll go over. But it's kind of the thought process again was if there was dark knots in the wood, it wouldn't be knots everywhere. It would just be in spots here and there where you'd see a dark knot in the wood. So that's kind of what I thought with the graphite since it was the darkest of the three. I didn't do it all over like I did the next two books. Again, I'll go over all that, but this is where you start. Okay, now on to our next step. We have our base coat of the French linen. As you'll see, it already kind of starting to take on that driftwood look with just the gray finish. One coat leaving the wood grain coming through. Really already kind of gives it a cool look, right? So now, the way I decided to do it was based on what I mentioned before. I Google searched some driftwood pieces, pictures, and just figured out, okay, how can I duplicate that with paint? And from the looks of things, it was like the bottom part was still the deep dark brown color or black or whatever you want to call it. And then some of the knots had the darker color to it. So I decided I was going to go with graphite as the first of the dry brushing that I was going to do over our base coat. And I decided to do that, but I decided to do it in spots and not all over like the next two layers are going to be because I just felt like when I was looking at it, it was like there was dark spots within the driftwood, but not all over the place. So it's kind of the way I decided it, how to do it. Uh, of course, when you do it, you can do it however you want. If you want to do streaks of the graphite all over, you can. So for this, I went with a little bit of the smaller size. This is a three inch uh, chip brush. Just dip it in my paint a little bit and I'm gonna wipe it off. So I'm gonna get a really true, good dry brush because I wanna make sure it gets on there just how I want it. So we're gonna do like that. And we're just gonna streak some on here. So I'm gonna turn it so maybe you can see a little bit better. Okay, so that's gonna need a little bit more. Let me see here. A little bit too dry. So I'll dab it a little less this time. The wetter your chopped hog gets some more, it's gonna leave on there, so. Okay, let me go down this way, like this. Just like that. And you're not gonna wanna go like over it a bunch of times because you're not trying to blend it in, you're just trying to leave the streaks of it. So you're gonna kinda go in one clean stroke, kinda something like that. And then you'll have more up here, more down here, or if you're wanting to put it like, you know, like a spot like that, you can go and stop go and stop, you know, something like that. Just don't go over it, over it, and over it, and over it, because that defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. We're just trying to get lines, streaked lines across and over top of what we already have done. Now, if you do end up going over a part, you see it's gonna blend and it's gonna spread and it's gonna thicken. So that's just what you have to know going in. If that's what you decide to do for that spot, that's fine. Just know it's gonna blend. So like right here, I'm gonna go over it a few more times to kind of give it like one of those knotted, darker spotted looks right there. And I know you're probably thinking, what the heck is he doing? It's gonna look stupid. But I promise, in the end it's all gonna work itself out because we're gonna go over this with a couple more layers of paint. So this is just what's gonna peek through the other layers that we're gonna add to it. So I'm gonna continue with this, a couple other spots. So down here at the bottom, just gonna do a quick drag across. Another quick drag over here, another quick drag over here, and another quick drag up this way. And of course, if you go over the edges, you know the edges are going to get some a little bit more. So depending on how you want your edges to look, you can drag it down the sides through the edges to get a little bit more on there. This corner didn't get any, so I'm going to make a little spot down there like that. So. That's kind of what you're looking for. I mean, like I said, hardly any paint at all. And, you know, it's just giving you some more effect to that layered, dried wood look that you're gonna go for. So, 
I think that turned out pretty good. Let me flip it around, make sure I got all the way around this thing. You guys can see the other side, how it looks. And again, I'm just going to drag it across the edges. And each layer over top of the other across the edges is going to take that and cover that paint up. But there's going to be a little bit peeking out, and that's the whole idea. Each layer is going to go on top of the other, but what's below is still going to peek through a little bit, peek through a little bit, peek through a little bit. So it's going to have that really cool layered look with ultimately it ending up being a white gray kind of finish to it. So, so that's it for now. We got the French linen and then the graphite. And again, we just did that in spots. So I did a heavy spot there, some heavier spots up here, and then just kind of drag it across as the paintbrush dries just to get a good layer of the graphite, but not a completely covering layer for this particular finish. And that's it for now. Next up will be Paris Gray. All right, so we're on to our next step. We have our French linen base coat, one coat, and then our graphite, and we kind of did it in spots here and there to kind of give that, you know, you know, aged, spotted, dark areas of what's going to be a wood grain look. So, but what I'm going to do is for the next two steps, I'm going to zoom in and kind of show a little bit closer of how I'm doing the dry brush across just so it's easier for you guys to see um, for this the graphite step you can kind of see from a distance you know it's just spots here and there and lightly done but I want to zoom in when I'm doing these next couple steps to really show and then when I do zoom in you can kind of see how the graphite is set and how it's just a little bit here and there and actually how it gets covered up but some still peeks through a little bit better if I'm zoomed in so that's what we're going to do so our next step is going to be dry brush with Paris Gray so just let me uh, adjust the camera and we'll come back with just zoomed in just on the piece okay so here we have the close-up view hopefully that makes it a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm about to do so I'm using the same kind of thought process as far as using my shop towel and a chip brush but for this particular step it's probably going to be a little bit heavier with the paint and then I'm using an actual four inch just to cover more space because um, ultimately oh, no no don't get down there um, I want to cover more space because I'm going to be doing this evenly throughout the entire piece unlike what we did with the graphite. So I'm just going to get a little bit more paint on here. So I'm just dipping it in there since it doesn't actually fit in the can and spreading it evenly throughout my chip brush here. Okay, so just getting, like I said, a little bit more on than what we did with the graphite because it's going to be a heavier look that we're going to do. So we're going to do straight across and stop just like that. And if you've not done a dry brush before, if you flip it over, the other side's going to be wet. So you flip it and kind of go the other direction, kind of like that. And you'll see it's going to be heavier on the ends where you started or any places where you slow down, it's going to, the friction is going to pull more paint off. So, but that's a, one of the cool things about this finish is it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just to look like a wood grain, ultimately, was my thought for this in a gray driftwood style wood grain so there's no real reason for it to look perfect because you mean if you look up google search driftwood I mean, it's not like it has some exact specific way that it is you know what i mean so so that's that's what it's going to look like and you can see we just went evenly across and there's going to be spots of thicker, heavier grays, which is fine, especially knowing we're gonna go back over this with another color. So any spots where like maybe this is a little too thick, I'm gonna go over it with white. So you're gonna have the white lines, the graphite lines, the gray underneath, and then the white over top. So it doesn't really matter. You don't need to stress over any one of these particular steps. And then you see I pushed, dragged, and then as the brush gets drier, you can you know, push a little harder, drag a little more, and since this is a bigger brush, there's different sides. The middle, the left, and the right are all gonna have paint on it. So you're just gonna get 
all the paint off and then once you get all the paint off go back re-dip your brush get more paint on there and again use your shop towel because you don't want to come straight out of the can and try to do a dry brush because it is not going to work well for you if you do that so you want to try to get some of the paint off first and then you can see this is going to be a lot thicker there's going to be a lot more paint on here than you know the graphite that we did but that just means when you do your initial lay down like this you're going to go gentle at first and then as the paint dries and or comes off your brush then you can go with like a little bit heavier of a push to pull whatever paint is left off so and then this will just be to your preference so once you feel like you've got the the look that you want to have and ultimately it's going to be a wood grain dry driftwood color kind of thing so once you feel like hey i think i got it where i want then you can stop go in lines over here get it on there real good and i think that's coming out really great and then again, dragging it across your corners will then bring those corners up to the lighter color. So it was graphite a minute ago, and now it's going to be this Paris gray. Because we're going to go across all the edges all the way around. And on the corners, kind of what I did with this one was I went like this across the corners like this. And it was just so each of the little cornered areas got, I don't know, like a flared effect to it. Instead of it just on the edges, it, it went all the way across. And I did this on the drawers and any cornered areas I had. And it, I don't know, just kind of thickened it up a little bit in those cornered areas. And to me, it, it gave a good effect. And then as, like I said, I've only dipped this twice, and that's all the paint I'm going to need for this whole board. And as it dries, because I'm right under my air conditioning, so it's drying really quick, um, you can just keep laying it on there until you get the desired effect. And now that you're zoomed in, you can still see the graphite, although that dark graphite is now a little bit lighter because the gray went over top of it, but you can still see it. You can still see the wood grain from the actual wood itself. And you can see all that gray from the French linen. So ultimately, it's just going to have, like I said, this really cool gray driftwood look. With some of the wood still peeking through every step we go. So there you go. So our next step is going to be where we incorporate the white. And this will be maybe just a little bit heavier than what we just did with the Paris gray. So if you want to look at it like that, each, each edition of dry brush, you, you go a little heavier, a little heavier, because the overall look, you want it to be more of a white gray than a dark gray white, if that makes any sense. So it's a little less of the dark and a little more of the light. So at the end, it's more overall a white look, a soft white look with the gray incorporated into it. Now, as you play, you can decide though, you could have went a whole, you could have go that very opposite direction. You know, you could start with the white and come up to the graphite and have a, a darker driftwood look, you know? So just totally up to you guys, however you feel like you want to utilize these steps. But for this particular finish, the gray stone oak, this is what you're gonna do. So and you can see like the paint is almost completely dry off that thing now. So, and that's kind of what you're going to look for. So now I'm going to let this set, which won't take long at all because I'm dry brushing it. Yeah, it's already feeling dry already. And then we're going to go with the pure white. And we're going to go, just like I said, a little bit heavier. And I'm going to try to keep it in line streaks as best as I can and not let it get where we kind of puddled up here and here. And it'll look cool. But for that last step, I'm going to try to keep it in streaks as best I can and let the stuff from below peek through without it completely covering it. So that'll be it for now. And uh, like I said, one more step of pure white dry brush and then we'll be on to the waxing. 
Howdy, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. And if you are, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know next time I add some new content. And please, please, please share. The biggest thing about my uh, or motto or whatever you want to call it is create, share, inspire. And that's what I'm trying to do. Create content to inspire people to start painting, to try new things, and just maybe step outside their comfort zone. So if you are enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button, which will ultimately help me grow my channel and in turn allow me to reach more people. All right, now we're on to our final step. And again, I'm gonna use the four inch, which doesn't fit in the can, so this paint is way down there. So I'm using some assistance from another brush here real quick. I'm gonna paint that on there for me. Some I have in FIFO bottles I could squirt out, which is a heck of a lot easier. But for those that know me, no, I don't use white all that often. So white is not one of them. So let's do that. That's gonna have to work. And I'm still using the same shop towel I started with. I've just been folding it over here. Now I just gotta get it evenly on there real good. This is going to be our pure white, obviously, and this is going to be a little bit thicker than the rest have, but more deliberate with the lines. So we're going to go just a little bit more deliberate with it, you know, and try to get the straight lines all the way across. And I flip my brush over and try to be, like I said, just a little bit more deliberate about how those lines get on there just like that pretty 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 and then the white and as I mentioned in the previous video we're going to do a little bit thicker and the trick to this too is no matter what it's going to come out different every time you do it I mean there's it's really kind of impossible to duplicate this exactly you know, this is going to look very, very similar to the pieces that you're going to see in the example, but it's not going to be the same exact thing because it's just such kind of a free flowing type of finish, but man, yeah, it does still look really cool. Um, and then when I added the silver gilding wax over the hardware I think that that's what really took it to another level because it went from this really cool gray white finish to just being just having more of an elegant look and a lot of times the white just looks elegant anyway depending on what you do to it um, but this one was just so different because it had the other colors that went along with the white it wasn't just like a pure white finish and that was it this out of the way. So then when you add the silver hardware, it just took it to another level, I thought anyway. And I'm in love with that dark silver gilding wax over hardware anyway. Alright, I'm gonna hit those edges again. Oh there's still some paint on here. Okay. Now again, where I did the corners, I told you I kind of swiped across the corners. I kind of did that a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit across the corners, just like that. I mean, I don't, honestly don't even know why. I just did it because I wanted to get a little bit more, I don't know, like cross hatching over those, that cornered area to thicken it up a little bit. And I really liked how it looked, so that's, that's pretty much it. A lot of times, like, art is art. You just, you kind of have an idea in my head. I knew in my head what I wanted this to look like. It was a matter of making the art translate what my brain saw, pretty much. So sometimes you just kind of make it up as you go. And what I do for you guys is I try to hold that knowledge in my brain. So if it's something people end up liking, which this one people seem to really enjoy, I can come back and do a video on it after the fact. 
So, and a couple of times I've had to write it down because I got myself in pretty complicated with some of the finishes I've done. And a matter of fact, this one, before I did the video, I had to go back and make sure I had the right colors just to make sure I had it exactly how I did it on the piece because the piece is what people seem to really like. And yeah, looks cool. Looks cool, looks cool. So, you'll find that each layer lightens up the last. So the overall look is going to be a very white looking piece, right? But as it blends, it'll get more the gray. So, you see I did this, this finish step right here with the, with the paint, right? So, what you could do is go back over it one last time. I'm going to do that for you so I can show you what I'm talking about, which is what I did on the piece, I'm pretty sure. And I made, okay, so now we got, it's like a gray with some white streaks in it. And now I'm gonna go over it one last time with the white and make some more pronounced white, very just white streaks. So I'm gonna go like that. And it's gonna be just one little stroke over top. And that's it, I'm not gonna touch it no more. So after I did my feathering in of the dry brush first with the white, then I went over it just that one stroke. And what it kind of does is it makes it like a more pronounced line of white and then it gives it a little texture too because it's just, it'll be a little bit thicker than when you feathered out the dry brush because it, it flattened it out. Now this will give it like little white ridges of dots of lines and you'll feel it in your finish, which is kind of cool, which just added to the whole effect that I was going for. So, very cool. So anyways, that is it. That is graystone oak, and you can kind of see, you know, looks like gray stone, white, like oak wood that you can get all dried up in the sun. So, pretty cool. So next is gonna be the wax, and that's where it's all gonna really get brought to life. All the different colors that were in there are gonna really jump out at you um, with Annie's clear wax, and also give you that where you're gonna be able to feel the texture of the piece. And then I'm not actually gonna do the silver gilding wax in this video, but uh, you'll see in the pictures what the silver, the dark silver gilding wax does to complement this particular finish, so. So next up will be the clear wax. All right, so we're on to our final step. As you can see, turned out really, really nice. And depending on how white you want it, you could go another, you know, let it dry and do another overcoat, that last, you know, dry brush with the one swipe. You could do that again if you want, but I, I'm really enjoying how this looks. I think this is uh, right on par with what I did in the piece that you'll see in the pictures and uh, really turned out well. I'm very happy with how this sample board went and I think uh, really gives you a good idea of what layering with a dry brush can do to a piece. So I'm just going to do a little wax in here and show you what happens when. So what I'm going to do, and anytime I do something that has like direction, like with the lines and the strokes. I try to wax in that direction. And if you've used any Sloan waxes before, you know, sometimes it doesn't get all the way down into the paint. You know, it leaves some streaky marks in it. And, uh, you know, you, you can go back over it. You can do a second coat and kind of fill those in if you, if you feel like it's super necessary. But a lot of times for me, I'll just incorporate that into the finish itself which just gives it another layer of dimension to it, which I enjoy a lot of times. So with that being said, if you go with the direction of your brush strokes and you do enjoy the fact that there's like areas of streak where you know there's wax, but it didn't get into the paint where it changed the color because we know it, the depth of the color changes a little bit with her waxes. Well, if it does not get in there, 
real like like everywhere else and it leaves little streaks while it's going with your brush stroke. So it just adds, like I said, another little layer of depth to what you have going on. But if you go like in circles or something and you got weird circular striations through your piece, but the paint is in straight line brush strokes, well, then you're gonna have to go over it a second time with your wax to fill it in, you know, cause it's gonna go against the whole overall finish that you were looking for. So, so just, you know, a little tip, something to think about, but obviously you can do it however you feel like doing it. That's just something how I, I like to do it. Anytime there's lines or strokes with my paint, I go with it when I brush it on. And anytime there's not, I'll usually go in circular, you know, the circle motion and try to get it down in there real good. But her wax, you really don't go too thick with it. You know, put it on there, brush it in real good. And then we're gonna wipe off with a shop towel. And what's cool about this finish too is you're not gonna notice if you, you know, have any of those streak marks as much as like a one color or a two color finish. So it goes on really, really easily, I guess is the idea for this. So waxing a lot of times is kind of a pain in the butt because you're worried about having those streaks or missing spots. This, you're really not gonna need to worry about it. So that's it, easy peasy. And I'm gonna take my shop towel and just simply wipe off any excess I'm gonna have. I should have a whole lot based on how I brushed it on. And I can already feel the texture that was built up from the layers of paint through the shop towel. And I think that's probably what I, I, I like the finish, but that fact that it has this really cool feel to it, this is what I think I like the most about this particular finish. And that's what a dry brush layering can do because you're leaving, um, texture behind anytime you're going to dry brush unless you feather it out a lot anyway so and that's going to be it you know just a little bit wiped it off and then you come back and buff it either with a buffing brush or another dry um, shop towel and then I mentioned this in most of my videos or maybe I don't um, shop towel just fold it in squares so you can flip-flop it back over and use these two sides and then open it back up and fold it back over and use those four sides. You notice a lot of times in my videos I'm talking about ways to save money. None of us are rich, so um, always trying to find a way to save on supplies when I can and that's just another little thing I do. Like that same shop towel I used for this whole video that I, I just folded it over when I was doing the dry brushing part. So it's already starting to buff out, which I can feel. But you don't necessarily need to do right away, which you can if you, if you feel like you want to. But I'll usually wait till it, it's not as tacky and give it like a day at least. And then come back with my either my buffing brush or one of these, depending on, and really make it have a sheen to it. But look at that. Really cool. I'm excited. This turned out really great. Um, and again, you're gonna have that dark silver gilding wax on your hardware somewhere. And I think the silver complements the gray tones throughout this better than say a gold or, you know, a black could work. But I really feel like the dark silver, especially a gilding wax where you're going over the edges and leaving the recessed areas a darker color, all kind of intermingled together really well. So. But that's it for this finish. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you guys that happen to do any like this, just be sure to share it with me so I can see. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. You learned something. And ultimately, at the end of the day, get inspired to try it. I really hope you do. If you do, be sure to tag Refurbished Gentleman on Instagram and or Facebook. And just let me know. Let me see what you've done. And of course, if you have questions, drop them in the comments down below. Or you can find me on Facebook on a more day-to-day -day basis. Uh, please, please, please subscribe. Share this content out if you did enjoy it. And last but not least, if you do decide to utilize the um, products that I'm currently using that I'm recommending to duplicate this finish, 
You'll find everything in the links down below. They're all affiliate links and those affiliate links will continue to support me and allow me to provide free content for you. And in some cases, I do have discount codes from the companies that I work with that will allow you to get a little bit extra something off of your final purchase. So all those things are at no cost to you, but they do help me in the end continue to do what I love to do. So everybody have a blessed day and as always, happy painting.